Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today is a very special episode. We are bringing back Robert Wolf, who I'm proud to announce is an author in our recently released Business Leaders book. And I, let me tell you, we're, as I said, welcoming Robert on, back onto the show. We've, been, we've had Bob on a couple times. Every time I learn something new, I hope our audience does as well. And I'm, we just get further and further down the, the line of strategy and what makes sense for people out there. So great to have, first off, Bob, great to have you back on the show. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it's always fun to uh, hang out with you and uh, spend some time with you. All right. So we, we got a lot to cover today. I mean, we got a book to talk about. We got, we, we're gonna, definitely going to get into some strategy, a negative K-1 tax strategy, investing in franchise businesses. I know every time you've come on the show, I've always been surprised because you always have another angle, another way to help your clients. That's not the surprising part. What surprises me, though, is that is because I know you're doing good work. What surprises me, though, is some of the strategies you developed and some of that, that customization and, and how you're able to help. That's special. So we're definitely going to get into that strategy and what you're doing and what you and your team have developed. But before we do, you already know the drill. We'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So, Bob, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives and experts. That's our mission. Bob, what mission matters to you? Thanks, Adam. I appreciate that. So as an asset coach and tax strategist, our mission is to help taxpayers, help business owners understand how to utilize the tax code to help build their wealth. It's the bottom line. And, and we do that by just going through and translating what the IRS communicates to us. So to us, it's simple. To others, it's not. But that's what matters to us and what's the most important. It's great. So great to have you back on. And I guess just to, I don't have a lot, lot of new listeners. I don't want to assume that maybe some of our newer audience caught maybe some of the previous work that we've done together. So maybe let's start by unpeeling that, that orange of Terra Firma Business and Financial Consultants. So you said tax strategist, tax coach. I mean, like, how does all this work? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. So, you know, in the 20 plus years I've had in the financial service industry, I've learned over the years working with business owners, working with individuals, as you know, coming from the financial industry as well. There's there's a lot of strategies out there. There's a lot of good advice. And what I started finding that was the advice for traditional employees versus advice for business owners was pretty much the same that was out there. And the reality is, is that it's completely different. The advice needs to be completely different. And so as a business owner myself, I started diving more into not just the strategies that you and I have learned in the business, but also what else is out there by just communicating and, and researching and reviewing the rules that are laid out there with, with the IRS code or the various retirement plans or how businesses work or insurance works and how all these different various things that we have to have as a business owner. But how do these work with each other? And you and I are taught and we're all taught that the riches are in the niches. Yeah. And so we try to focus on a specific type of area of business and be an expert in that business. And I found that the opposite was true, that when you go to a bookstore, those exist still. But remember yeah. back when we had bookstores, we would go to the business or investing section and they'd mm -hmm. have all these books and you'd go pick up a book and you'd go read it. And uh, great. Now what? How do I implement that knowledge and that information? Yeah. And so that's essentially what we, I started doing was I started building a bridge between these various assets, these various strategies mm -hmm. to where now business owners and people who feel like they're overpaying in taxes can come and have somebody who can bridge the gap between these different areas. And we have found that that, that is my area of, of expertise. So we found that being a little bit broader with that expertise was actually more beneficial for our clients as well for us. Mm. And so I think this is a, a really good transition. I want to, we'll go, we'll go further into the strategy we'll be talking about today in a moment, but first I want to, I want to go into the, the most recent release. So I'm proud to announce that you're a, a two-time author with Mission yes. Matters. And when I heard you were going to be joining this project, I, I was thrilled because I know your content and, and I know you always come with something special. So for this particular book, like the topic, like why this, why not? 
I just felt it was important. The amount of information that's out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we are put in positions of leadership, whether we want to or not. And when we're put in these positions of leadership, we tend to put on this different air and mm -hmm. try to sometimes be who we aren't. And I thought it was important to just get back to the roots and understand that we are who we are today because of the decisions we've made over the years. And not every decision is a good decision. Yeah. It doesn't yield a good result, but it was a learning moment. It was a learning experience. It allowed us to evolve into who we are today to be considered a leader today. And mm. so I thought it was important to embrace that, to embrace our humanness of and, and not knowing all the answers, but the desire to want to continue to evolve and thrive and excel and and be that a little bit better for that next person that we end up meeting with because of those decisions that we've made in the past good or bad yeah and so as i got, kind of go through some of the, some of the content so decisions you make make you the cash flow quadrant influence giving your two week note you have a couple of things here but i wanted to i want to zero in on one and kind of maybe take you back you know okay. a little bit earlier in your career and uh, and when i think about what's going on right now in the economy so for just for for context we're recording this june 6th of 2023 so a whole lot going on in the economy and you know if some people are are winning in this environment. Some people are really, you know, they're, they're feeling the pain. Mm -hmm. uh, when I see you, the story that you laid out though, and, and specifically, I want uh, if I can take you back there for a moment, sure. giving your two week notice. So I'm taking you way to the back, you know, beginning of your entrepreneurial career. You had the news that, you know, your wife was pregnant, you know, 9-11 happened right after that. And then your, your job even gave you the, at that point, gave you the option to, to stay if they wanted to, after you'd given your two week notice. So when I was mm -hmm digging into this kind of like I'm digging into this Bob and I'm like I'm feeling the like ah uh, the the pull and I'm like man man how did you do it like yeah. like and I'm and I because I want other people to hear this story because there's some people going through that right now yeah yeah well I believed in myself that was the one mm -hmm. thing I believed in myself and I also had a dream and I knew that if I was presented in a moment, an opportunity, a situation to where I had a, a pathway to choose mm -hmm. and I could have chosen the easy pathway, which was stick where I was at, take yeah. the offer from my previous employer and continue to do and take the safe route. And mm -hmm. which, which normally seems like the safe route, mm -hmm. right? And it presented because it's what you know, it's what you understand. And, but I had this opportunity to say, well, but if I want to evolve, if I want it to be better, if I want to grow and thrive, I have to strive for my dream. I have to strive for what I want. So at some point, even if I didn't succeed, which I didn't, yeah. right, there's an evolution of learning and I, I had to go get a job and I had to go be an employee. And then I, and then, you know, it led me to where I'm at today, but none of this would happen today. You and I would not be talking unless yeah. I believed in myself, one. Two, I trusted in that dream and strived for that dream. And the mm. third thing is I had the support system that believed in me as well. Yeah. And so with those things, it just, it made sense to just, Hey, I made a decision. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. And I'm at the time I was young enough, right? I, I had hair. Imagine that I had hair. I didn't <laughs> wear glasses. I didn't have a gray beard and that was a lot different. And, yeah. but I still believe that was the right decision to make. And, yeah. and, and, and part of that story you shared, and this is the part where it's like, okay, you make the decision, right? You jump off the ledge, but then we look at some of the other things. I mean, you were, you were literally, as you lay out in the book, you know, knocking on doors. So it's not just that one time decision. It's, it must've been, and it had to have been that decision you were making every single day, that alarm clock, every day that alarm clock rang to get you out of bed. Like yeah. that was a decision, right? Yeah, man, it was, that was tough. That was tough. And, you know, it was interesting. And it goes back to that, the whole support system. My wife, pregnant at the time, there was days that she would jump in the car and she'd sit in the car while I knocked wow. on doors just to give me that support and that belief. And, uh, you know, that, and that's, that sometimes drives you, right? We have people in our lives who are willing to do that. They may not be a spouse or anything like that, but they may be people in our lives that, that want to help you succeed. They want to do something for you. Mm. The key here is, are you willing to ask for mm. the help? Are you willing to ask? Are you willing to become vulnerable just for a little moment? 
to be able to embrace that decision. And mm-hmm. in my my story and in my history, looking back right now, as it's rushing through my mind as yeah. we're talking, there's a lot of li- little moments like that and not always the same person, not on the same gender, not mm-hmm. even the same people that I that I would call today or even talk to today. Yeah. But in that moment, those people are there. And it's just, you again, I think it's just something that you need to try. We need to try to evolve because that's, it, it, again, the easy route mm-hmm. <laughs> is yeah. not evolution. <laughs> yeah. And so, at, and at some point, some point in this journey, right, as you kind of, as you kind of lay out, like you have this kind of this, this thought process as you're going through and you're, you're learning the certain strategies that the previous firm maybe shared with you. And then you're kind of learning and you're learning and you're learning and you're seeing that there's more, there's other things like, like how did that piece of it evolve? Yeah. So that's a good question. And so I think for me, I always wanted to be productive. I wanted to always provide a solution. I'm an educator. I'm not a trained educator. I'm a natural educator. I I like to help people. I like to communicate to people. And and God's blessed me with the ability to be able to use analogies and explain things that tend to be a little more difficult or some areas that some people don't understand and be able to paint that picture or tell that story so to, so to speak, as you know, it's all about stories. Our lives are a mm-hmm. story. We're, we're living our stories. And so in going through this process and looking at strategies and looking at that next step is what was that story? What, what was that, that aspect of that particular strategy or that situation and that client? How can that work? And so I was always the guy who said, hey, you know what? Yeah, I understand this is a pen, but what else could it be? What else could it be used for? There's got to be something else other than, than just being a pen. And if it's just a pen, then great. Now I know it's just a pen. Mm-hmm. But if I didn't do that due diligence, that research and that effort of trying to figure out how to use this pen as something more productive other than a pen, we, I wouldn't have evolved. I wouldn't have been able to, to find opportunities and, and solutions for our clients and, and prospective clients, right? We're gonna, we have more prospective clients today then we do have actual clients, right? Mm. I'm 47. So yeah. if we look at life expectancy, technically I should have another 40 years-ish, right? So there's going to be a lot more people that I will meet that I haven't even thought about right now that are going to benefit from you and I in these conversations mm-hmm. and, and researching and looking at everything as it's more than what it is. And at the end of the day, that tends to be true most of the time. Mm. Well, I'm going to cut you off there, Bob. For everybody watching, I know you want more. Buy the book. We're going to we're <laughs> going to have some links in the in the show notes where you can you can pick up a copy and and get go further into Bob's story and some of his knowledge. Which trust me, you want to pick up a copy. But uh, but transitioning today, Bob, I do want to go into this the strategy. I say new strategy because it's new to me. It's not a new strategy. You're not. There's no alchemy. There's nothing that right. you've done other than exactly what you said you do and which i respect which is you go to the code you see where there's a where there's something that you can do to add value to your clients lives and you and then you apply it right so again just i like to kind of set the table that way when i say new strategy it's new to me and then once you explained it to me it's like duh why didn't i like not it's not my business so i wouldn't have thought of it but number one so i know why i didn't think of it but i think a lot of people that listen to this are going to are going to benefit from this so i guess like how do you want to set the stage on this, like negative K1 strategy, real estate versus businesses. How do you want to set the table? Sure. Well, I guess let's just just dive into it and kind of talk about the evolution of how we got here. And I think the first thing in the way we got here was real estate, right? A lot of people love investing in real estate and it's a big bigger now than it was before, if you can even Mm -hmm. imagine that. But there's a lot of groups out there touting real estate from a tax strategy. And really, real estate is a a tax strategy if you're a real estate professional. It's a tax strategy if if it's designed correctly and appropriately. And a lot of times, real estate gives you the benefits because of something called cost segregation. It's an accounting Mm -hmm. feature. And so also in traditional business, you have the same thing called depreciation. That's what cost segregation is. It's a, it's an acceleration of depreciation. Well, the government, the Congress has laid out certain go- rules and laws within the IRS code to allow businesses to do the same. Mm. 
And so there's times where they'll have something called a bonus depreciation where you can accelerate the depreciation of equipment and material. And so with that accounting, Mm -hmm. those things in business, you're allowed to do. Now in a service business like you and I, right? What do we get to depreciate? Our furniture. Okay, now Mm -hmm. what? (laughs) Right? There there isn't anything, but there's a lot of businesses that require more capital, more equipment, Mm -hmm. more machinery, so to speak. And that's where those rules, those accounting rules and the IRS guidelines on those Mm -hmm. allow those types of businesses to thrive from that perspective. So when looking at that, Adam, I sat there and I said, okay, now one thing, I don't have an accounting degree. It's again, Mm -hmm. one of those things where you just grab, you start researching Google. Geez, I don't know where we would be without Google search, (laughs) right? Definitely not as smart as we are as a society, or maybe you can make an argument that we're not smart, even, Mm -hmm. but that's a different conversation. And so as we, as I start going through that evolution and looking at it and say, okay, so if I am a business owner right now, And I get the benefits of the tax code as a business owner. And I have all my expenses coming out of my business that pays for my business, my personal lifestyle and all that kind of stuff. What if I had a second business? Mm -hmm. In that second business, I was able to cash flow and I can actually share my expenses from my first business to my second business. Mm -hmm. What would happen to my margins? They would go up. Because I'm sharing the expenses. So let's say I needed $10,000 a month of income to survive. Mm-hmm. And I have two businesses. Technically, if I was able to take $5,000 out of each of those, then that mm-hmm. leaves $5,000 in each of those as cash flow to build that business. Mm-hmm. So I can use that money to grow. So as I started going through that process, Adam, I was looking at traditional investing, like we were, like we were taught yeah. in, when we first get in the financial world and stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, whatever you want to call it, real estate as well. Then why can't I do this as a business? Now, what mm-hmm. kind of business? That was the other thing is, well, shoot, I have a business and I've started my business from scratch and yeah. man, I don't have the time, energy, or the ability to start a whole nother business from scratch. Yeah. So guess what's out there? Franchises. The recipe has been written already, right? And so franchises are such a huge industry now, and and there's such a hand up, not a handout, but a hand up to people who want to get into business, giving them the opportunity of a process, of procedures, do this, this, and this, and you should yield the same result as these other locations that have done Mm -hmm. the same right? Sure. You may like salt. So you can put a little more salt in that recipe, or maybe you have a sweet tooth and you want to add a little more sugar, right? Mm -hmm. You can add your personality into this recipe. But the reality is, is that I don't have to figure things out. Mm -hmm. Now, not every franchise is a food franchise. Mm -hmm. There are tax franchises, there's financial franchises, there's loan franchises, there's franchises for every business model. Mm -hmm. And each of those brands have whatever they offer as a product and or service. Mm -hmm. So if I'm looking at a tax strategy and I'm looking at the tax code and I'm trying to figure out how can I get money invested in a business and I have cash flow, but I, I can use accounting to be able to keep that cash flow, but reduce the taxes on that cash flow from being profit to where now it's taxable. Mm -hmm. And so if I can use accounting to offset that, then that means that what could be taxable income now is essentially tax free Mm -hmm. because of accounting. And so I've started looking for that. And so my first go around, to be honest with you, I had no idea where to start. (laughs) Let's go find something. So I started off with a heating and air conditioning business. Mm -hmm. Why? Recession proof, right? That's the first thing you always think. Yep. At the time, I lived in Southern California. And so we all love our, our cool house. Air conditioning. Oh, yeah. Right? The air conditioning and the heating in the winter. And, and so I thought it was recession proof. Well, then guess what happened? We had COVID. We had the mm-hmm. pandemic. We had supply chain issues. We had human capital issues, right? People didn't mm-hmm. want to work. And so when you're in an area that all of a sudden you couldn't get equipment and then you couldn't get licensed people, then all of a sudden your business is worth what? Yep. Right. And so that was my first issue. And so then I said, okay, I got to find something that's recession proof, supply Mm -hmm. chain proof. (laughs) Oh man. Capital proof. Right. Yep. And so that's when I started looking at franchises and Mm. finding those franchises where I could buy equipment, 
but it wasn't, you know, like air conditioning equipment where right. it was it was equipment that was more accessible. If I couldn't buy equipment, could I rent that equipment? Because I still had a business to run. I still had revenue. I'm yep. going to still have clients that needed servicing. And so that's what I ended up doing was finding a business model that I needed equipment. I didn't need somebody licensed or very well educated at that to be able to yeah. do that business. And so that was a model that made a lot of sense for me. And so how mm-hmm. do you scale that model? Well, you have one or two options to do. One, go to the bank or SBA to get money, mm-hmm. self-fund it, or other people's money. Yeah. And then that's where we started looking at family and friends and existing clients and say, hey, we have this business that we, we'd like to expand and grow. Here's how mm-hmm. the model works. And would you like to be an owner of the business? And yeah. by doing that, we started seeing that the accounting started creating some negative K-1s because of the equipment we bought, the accounting mm-hmm. of how the business ran to where now I had a negative K-1 that offset positive income. Mm-hmm. And so did, so did our partners and our owners. And so we call it a strategy, but in reality, it's business. Yeah. How confusing is business? It's not. And so the government has some guidelines of saying, hey, you can't start a business just to lose money. Of course. Right? And and that's what we started doing back in in the 80s. And then Reagan created in 1986, he created an entire tax reform act, really because of just that. People were Mm. starting businesses to create losses. So you need to show that you're in business to make money. So you have to have revenue. Right. And it doesn't say what kind of revenue, just says you need to have revenue. You need to have Mm -hmm. employees. Well, if you think about it, the taxes, the tax code, taxes, payroll. And when you look at the government talking about tax income, they are talking about payroll taxes. Right. So, me as a business owner, I pay taxes through my employees by hiring employees. Mm -hmm. So, they give us accounting opportunities to reduce our expenses, our taxes. So we have more cash flow as business owners. Hmm. We have more cash flow as business owners. What do we do with that? Invest it back in the business, equipment, employees. Mm -hmm. And so that's just called business. And so that's essentially what we did. We just started doing that. And when you look at the hotel industry, Hmm. this was kind of the baseline of what we started building our model off of. The hotel industry, most of the hotel brands don't own the building. Mm. Investors own the building and they franchise or license the brand Marriott, Hyatt, Hilton, whoever Mm -hmm. to run that building. Mm -hmm. And so that's essentially what we do is we run the business for our clients, for our investors. We bring them on as advisors, right? There's all these different guidelines and rules we got to bring them on. as, and, and, And so we're all benefiting from this, but essentially that in a nutshell, in 10 mm-hmm. minutes, that's what we've started doing was building this, this model out, just using regular business rules, using mm-hmm. regular accounting rules, and it yields a benefit that we want. Yeah. And so what type of franchises did you end up going towards? Like, I know you said the first one was heating and cooling. Are you still in that space or just in general? What what kind of franchises did you start yeah. going towards? That's a great question. So For us, it was, okay, how do we get clients, right? Mm -hmm. The the main thing for any business owner, right? When we got into financial services, that was our concern. How do we engage and get clients? Mm -hmm. And so in the tax practice and our business practice, asset coach and tax strategist, I have to have a certain type of client. Well, Mm -hmm. in building these businesses, I don't, I didn't want to try to figure out what's the right type of client. So we went in models that it was very easy to acquire clients and customers. And Mm -hmm. so we're in the water restoration industry for one of our businesses mm. because everybody that has running water is a potential client. And then if they don't have running water, but they're affected by mother nature, they're a potential client, mm. right? So everybody's a potential client. And so we looked at that. Now I'm in the North Texas area. Mm-hmm. So we have severe weather. We have rain, we have freezes, we have humidity, we have heat, right? Mm-hmm. We have, we have it all. And Mm -hmm. so it's a good model for us because it allows us to have cash flow throughout the year, depending on what's going on in the weather, in the cycle of our our year. And Mm -hmm. so that was one business. Another business is we wanted to try to create somewhat related. So it's still in the home service business industry. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we went in one of our other businesses is in the roofing business. 
And then there, then our last one is we work with a cattle broker and we have clients invest in, in buying cattle. Wow. Uh, and, uh, you know, because of the, the supply and the demand, and I won't go into the details of it, but at the end of the day, can you get any more Texas just for one second, please. <laughs> Shout out to Texas. I love I, Texas. I left my cowboy hat at home. I was gonna <laughs> wear it just, just for effect. I'm like, well, I don't know. That's what I'm wear. talking about. Go ahead. I just had to had to say it. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, it, it goes back to the story in the book, right? The mm-hmm. decisions we make affect us and make us who we are. Yeah. And so we have to embrace these decisions and dive into these decisions, but not only to see how they affect me, but mm. how do they affect my environment? And that includes the people that are around us. Mm. And so three years ago, I had, it was me and two employees. And today we're pushing 30 to 35 employees in all of our organizations. Yeah. And so it's, and it's continuing to expand and grow and, mm. and it's been very exciting, but Adam, nothing sexy. It's just business. And we just figured out a way to make it accessible Mm -hmm. to more people to be in business without having to dive into it and change their entire world to be part of a business. Yeah. No, that's great. And for you to be able to add that type of value and give people options, like a lot of times people don't have options and, and you know, they end up going down some paths that maybe, maybe cost them and they, yeah. they maybe aren't, aren't so, aren't so good. And it's hard to recover too. After, yes. you know, en- enough dips, enough age creeps in, those yeah. recoveries are are shorter and, or, or take longer yeah. and maybe you don't get to where, where you wanted to be ultimately. And, and you remember that when it came yeah. to retirement planning, when it came to kind of planning somebody's different phases of their life and how they'd spend it and everything yeah. else. Yeah. So you creating these, you say it's just business. I say it's it's a lot of opportunity that many people wouldn't have otherwise. Yeah. So speaking of opportunity, like like how do people work with your firm in general? Like, like what's the model? Yeah. So because of certain rules and regulations that are out there, we felt it made more sense rather than creating this transaction relationship like a lot of advisors and mm-hmm. insurance and even tax professionals are. We wanted to create more of a subscription, more of a consultative approach. So we created a membership, Terra Firm a membership. It is a monthly investment of 250 a month. So it's mm-hmm. not doesn't break the bank. It's just something that gets them in the door. And they get these various lists of services, tax planning, tax prep, financial planning, insurance planning, income planning, right? All these different aspects of planning that bridge the gap from tax, financial, and insurance all mm-hmm. under one roof. And then once we've done an assessment, know your client, right? Know your customer, yes. the, the, the rules that we need to have. And we understand their assets. That's the asset coach part of the asset coach and tax strategist. Once we understand their assets, their existing assets and how those assets can be used, Mm -hmm. because when you think most people have assets that they made decisions previously on. Yeah. You and I were taught to how to meet with people and say all the bad things or the wrong things or how to change Mm -hmm. these assets into something new. So Mm -hmm. it creates a transaction or, or a compensation for myself. And I'm not saying that's what happens with every situation, but mm-hmm. at, at the heart of it, that's essentially what we're doing. And so mm-hmm. these assets are still valuable assets. It just means mm-hmm. we've evolved and changed. So any new assets or the plan needs mm-hmm. to incorporate old and new. And so that's what our planning process as a member does is kind of figures out that that assessment, what your mm-hmm. situation look like, what are your goals today, tomorrow, and later on. And when you do retire, does that what kind of income do you want? How much do you have mm-hmm. a pension plan? Do you, does your wife have or your husband have a W-2 and you have a business? And how do we look at all these things? And we look at it from a tax perspective. And that's where tax strategist comes from with the yeah. asset approach and tax strategist. And so we're trying to bridge the gap of all these various things. And mm-hmm. so as a member, we get to have these dialogues. And sure, at certain parts, there is a transaction for whatever that asset or whatever that part of the strategy is. But the Mm -hmm. client now understands the evolution of why that's important. And they can always say, no, not a problem. Mm -hmm. It just means just like when you go driving and there's a roadblock or a detour, just got to go a different direction. Mm -hmm. We're not going the most efficient direction. Not a big deal. Let's just do a detour. We're still going to get to the end result. Mm -hmm. Just going to take a little bit longer. Not a big deal. Yeah. 
No, I think it's great. And I like the model from the standpoint of you're not like people don't have to pay a bunch up front. They don't have to like, and then also you're in the game together. So cor- correct me if I'm wrong, like as you develop new strategies, because this isn't the la- the last strategy you're coming up with. I already, yeah. I just already know. I mean, you've <laughs> got years and years of already doing this. And as you know, rules and laws and things change, like you're an opportunist, you're going to be working for your whole, your whole company, obviously all your clients and also yeah. yourself as an investor. Yeah. And as a, and as a strategist, like a lot of these things that you've done in the early days, and even now, I mean, you're benefiting from too. So it's like it's in your best interest. Yeah. And as your team grows, there's more eyes, more strategists, yeah. more people as well that are just going to keep coming up with more solutions. Again, not making up anything outside of you know what's supposed to be done. But you know, when we think about the the tax rules that are out there, we're talking you know thousands of pages. Yes. So for you to be creative within the rules and confines of those thousands of pages is is completely on the table yeah 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 no it's and that's true and i appreciate you saying that it's you know it's it's interesting because the rules a lot of people say rules are there to break them yeah but when you think about rules they give you guidelines and you think Mm -hmm. about as a kid your parents said you can do this you can't do this and we felt more comfortable when we knew what we can do but just look at mother nature a river Mm -hmm. thrives because of the banks Mm -hmm. Right. And if it did, if a river didn't have banks, the water would spread and would dissipate. And if it didn't have a good flow, it would no longer be a lake or a pond or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So the river banks, those rules give direction to where the water should flow the most. And and farmers Mm -hmm. know this the best because then they create canals. Right. They direct water. And that's what we are. And that's what rules do. The tax code, the the rules and regulations that are out there for whatever industry you're in, they're there to give you guidance. And if we spent more time following the rules, we would thrive more individually and as a society. It sounds crazy, but that's the reality is it's not to put their thumb on us. We feel that way because we never learned the rules. We didn't figure out why the rules exist. But when you think about it from a sports analogy, If you were to go play chess or even checkers and you sat down at the table with somebody who knew how to play checkers, what's Mm. your success, your rate of success at that? Yeah. (laughs) Right? You're going to get killed. But the moment you learn the rules, then you know how to strategize and organize. Mm. Right? And we see it in sports every year. A new quarterback comes out like Patrick Mahomes killed the league. Yeah. What happened year two? He was still good, but not as effective because the defensive coordinators were able to strategize. Yep. And that meant offense coordinators had to strategize. That mm-hmm. is life. And so rather than you know me looking at it and say, how can I skirt the rules? Wow, how can I just use the rules to my advantage? Mm-hmm. And, and and it's been been very beneficial for us. I, I don't know how else to say that. Yeah. Well, Bob, as always, really appreciate you coming back on the show and sharing new advice, new tips, new knowledge with our audience and myself. I learn every single time we talk, as I'm sure our audience does when they listen. That being said, if somebody's watching this or listening to this and they want to learn more about Terra Firma, what's the best way for them to connect with you and your team? Quickest and easiest way is just email us at support at Terra Firma Consultants llc.com. And I mean, that's the quickest. I would give you more information and where other areas, but that will be the quickest way to get a hold of us. Mm. And it goes to the person sitting right outside my office. So <laughs> I will get the information and just, yeah, just say, mention Mission Matters and Adam in the interview, and we'll set a time and then chat about what, uh, what your situation is. We have an entire process that we take people through and see if it's a good fit for either party. Yeah, that's great. And we'll put we'll put all that information in the show notes, of course, so that our audience can can head right on over. And speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters or engaging in an episode, we're all about bringing on business owners, entrepreneurs and executives and having them share their mission, the reason behind their mission, you know, why they do what they do and what we can all learn from that so that we grow together. If that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun or exciting to you, we welcome you. Hit that subscribe button. We have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And uh, Bob, again, thank you so much for all you do. I'm so thrilled to be out here promoting this second book you have with us. And man, appreciate all the work you're doing for your clients too. So thanks again for coming back on. Thanks again, Adam. It was fun.